Hello, everyone. Can you hear, guys hear me okay? Oh, awesome. Thank you. I'll give it a minute or two and then we'll start. Yeah, I want to make sure the volume is okay. Um, is the volume all right? Hello? Do you want me to add more volume or is the volume okay? If anyone can please type so I know. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so it's 8.30 p.m. for um, California time, so I should start. And I think it's kind of 12.30 p.m. for you. So welcome everyone. We're gonna today talk about all the oxidative stress assay kits that Biovision offers. So let me first introduce you my, uh, to you all. So my name is Shamli. I'm the Senior Product and Business Development Manager at Biovision. I have been with the company for about um, four years now. And today our main focus will be all the different kits related to oxidative stress. Because oxidative stress has been a very, um, one of our very good seller. So I will mention uh, about the different products that we have under this category. So we have subcategories under that entire big umbrella, oxidative stress. And I will talk about the products, what's the highlights, what makes us different, and a little bit of technical background, and what are our key selling points that you can use to sell our um, kits to our end users. So let's begin. Okay, so first we wanna know what is oxidative stress. So all in normal conditions, in a normal environment, all of our living cells, they always try to maintain a normal reduced environment. But when this reduced environment is lost because of production of this uh, reactive oxygen species, in short, ROS, and these reactive oxygen species could be peroxide, superoxide, free radicals, hydroxyl radical, then this leads to the damage of the cell components. And that includes lipids, proteins, DNA. And we do carry kits to study the damage of either proteins or lipid oxidation or DNA associated with this reactive oxygen species. So basically oxidative stress, we define that as the imbalance. So in general, at a constant level, always the, uh, these reactive oxygen species are produced in the cell, but the cell is able to detoxify this reactive oxygen species and they repair the damage. But stress, oxidative stress is defined only when that imbalance between the production of this oxidative oxygen species, the reactive oxygen species and cells ability to detoxify this oxygen species. And that because of this oxidative stress condition leads to a lot of damage to all these cell components. And it has been found that oxidative stress is a hallmark in many diseases. It can be neuro um, degenerative diseases or cardiovascular diseases, cancer, schizophrenia, multiple diseases. I have just given an example of few. Now the basic subcategory that we have under this are the, the reactive oxygen species. If you want to study 
the production of ROS, these oxygen species, and it will involve um, your free radicals, hydroxyl, peroxyl, or other oxygen, um, reactive oxygen species. Then I'll discuss about some kits under the prooxidants, some antioxidants, glutathione, glyoxylase. So these are basic subcategory. And under each category, I will go through the different um, kits, which will help you to study those different um, subcategories. So what are the basic K features for all of our kits? We, all of our kits are simple and the protocols are rapid, which means you can finish within an hour. These are non-radioactive. It's high throughput adaptable because most of these kits are 100 assays in a micro plate format. It's a plate based assays in most cases. And our kits are stable. So we do give a guarantee of one year from the uh, date of shipping. But in many cases, we have seen that if you store properly, some of the kits can be stored up to two years. But we do guarantee for at least one year. So you can, most of the kits are in minus 20. And uh, we, our kits, it is, uh, we do have many minor, very minor lot to lot variations. We QC every single lot that we make. And the inter and intra as a variability is very less. It's like within 15%. Our kits, most of our kits are microplate based, but we do have um, fluorescence microscopy based and flow cytometry based kits as well. We do offer in some case, mostly it's a hundred assay, but in some cases we do offer size of 25 assays, 50 assays, and in some cases like thousand assays or 2000 assays, which is more than hundred assays. So these are the basic key features of all of our assay kits in short. So as I mentioned that I will go through each of the subcategories and talk about the basic technical, the basic, um, the technical background behind the, uh, the idea of the kit and what's the purpose of the kit. So first I will come to the reactive oxygen species assay kit, um, K936, as you can see. So the pl platform is, it is, um, it can be flow cytometry, fluorescence, microscopy, and, um, as well as, uh, so it's a microplate fluorometric, FM stands for fluorescence microscopy, and FC for, for um, flow cytometry. So we have two different sizes, and these are cell-based. So you've, this kit will help you to detect the oxygen species, the reactive oxygen species, which includes a um, lot of oxygen species as shown here. It can be superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radical, peroxyl, um, in general, if you want to study the production of this. So endogenous levels of ROS is very low and it is normal. As I mentioned before, that cell is able to repair the damage caused by these endogenous levels. And these oxygen species in general at a normal level is, is important, is needed in cell signaling pathways, but only during apoptosis or aging or necrosis and, um, and I, as I show you before, in many diseases, ROS gets accumulated in the cells, leading to cell damage. So in this kit, I have shown you an example below of a fax study where these are jerked cells. They were labeled and they were treated with a ROS inducer. So as you see the experimental control, you see more cells. Um, showing the expression of ROS, H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, is um, also a hydrogen peroxide uh, as a positive control. We have another positive control, and you see the negative control, which is all the way to the back. But when this kit is able to detect um, the reactive oxygen species produced in the cell, this is an example of uh, Jerkut cells. So K936 is good for detecting ROS in live cells. It's a cell-based. Okay, so as I mentioned in the second subcategory are the pro-oxidants. 
So you want to know what are prooxidants? So prooxidants, they are chemicals that induces oxidative stress either by generating the reactive oxygen species or by inhibiting the antioxidant. As shown in the diagram, prooxidants can be the endogenous sources, which are like the NADPH oxidases or cytochromes or lipooxygenases, peroxisomes or the mitochondrial enzymes. And we do have kits for all these and I will also go through those as well as the endogenous sources, which are extracellular cytokines or radiation on bacterial or fungi toxins. Additionally, reactive oxygen species can be also formed by inhibiting the antioxidants like superoxide dismutase or catalysis or glutathione peroxidase. We do have kit for these as well, which I will go through eventually. And the non-enzymatic system will be glutathione, ceruloplasmin, ferritin, and vitamins. These are antioxidants, but non-enzymatic, which are able to protect um, the generation of reactive oxygen species. So let's come to the pro-accidents. And um, to give you a kind of some idea that this table shows that drug can be like the over-the-counter drugs like paracetamol or different anti-cancerous drugs, they can lead to generation of reactive oxygen species, leading to alteration in macromolecules, which can damage the tissue, mainly liver and kidney. Different metals can also induce the generation of reactive oxygen species. And so the different metals that I have shown here is magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, and we do have kits to study these different transition metals. Pesticides can lead to the generation of free radicals, which is again, a reactive oxygen species and can induce lipid oxidation. Yeah, rigorous exercise can lead to excessive reactive oxygen species. So these are some of the other example like mental anxiety can lead to an imbalance in the redox system leading to neuroinflammation and neurodegeneration, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction or altered neuronal signaling and inhibiting neurogenesis. Local ischemia, which is, it's another, we classified it under pathophysiology, physiology. It gives rise to increased ROS generation. Different numerous ex environmental factors, which can be extreme weather, leads to, like um, it can be heat, cold, or thunderstorm. And what happens is during adaptation, mitochondrial membrane fluidity decreases, which disrupts the transfer of electrons. They will increase the production of ROS. I will talk about the different kits that we have to study this um, uh, reactive oxygen species in mitochondria. Another, as I mentioned, antioxidants we have, which leads to generation of reactive oxygen species by inhibiting the antioxidant. And this antioxidant can be ascorbic acid, vitamin E, polyphenols, and we do have kits to study that. So let me go through the next slide. So what are the prooxidant kits we have? So as I mentioned, uh, like the different zinc ion, the transition metals, or the other small molecules, which can lead to the generation of reactive oxygen species. And this table gives you the catalog number of the kits we have, the platform, which is colorometric or fluorometric, or is it cell-based? And what are the sample type that you can use? I have just shown you some example, some diagrams, but most of our day kits are validated with the sample data, uh, which will kind of convince you that the kit works. So here, I, as I show, the diagram shows with K805, it's a formaldehyde kit, formaldehyde assay kit. And uh, we have shown with the both diabetic urine from non-diabetic patient and uh, urine from the diabetic patient. And you can see, you can see the difference that urine from the diabetic patient has more formaldehyde. In their, in their urine. Um, 
among the transition metal, we do have kits for calcium, magnesium, copper, zinc. I showed you the data for using one of the kit. It's just an example. With the zinc assay kit, you can detect the level of zinc in human serum. There are two samples, as well as human urine. So additionally, we do have kits for studying ethanol, methanol, formate, hydrogen peroxide, hemoglobin. So these are all pro-accidents, which means they lead to the generation of oxygen, reactive oxygen species. Okay, let's moving back to next kit. Uh, so in addition to the transition metals, we have different other enzymes that also leads to the generation of um, reactive oxygen species. They are the enzymatic uh, pro-oxidants. So the example is cytochrome P450. This is the kit number, K700. The platform is colorimetric and the sample you can use for cell lysate. If, we, if your end user wants to study P450 reductase, this is the enzyme involved, the, which is a pro-accident, but an enzyme. They can study in their cells or microsomes. Lipooxygenase is um, another enzyme. This is uh, one of our good seller, lipooxygenase, K978. We have two kits. K980 is an inhibitor screening kit. If you want to study, if your end user wants to study or screen inhibitors for lipooxygenase, which is a pro-oxidant generating reactive oxygen species, they can use K90, it's a fluorometric kit. Or if they want to study the lipooxygenase activity in their cell lysate or serum, they can use K978. So in general, fluorometric kit are more sensitive than chlorometric. So if their sample has low amount of lipooxygenase activity, we recommend them using the fluorometric kit, which is sensitive. So below is the data showing K700, which is cytochrome P450 reductase assay kit. You can see that um, you measure cytochrome P450 reductase is about 20 milliunits per milligram in rat liver. But when you add the inhibitor, the activity reduces. Again, Hep G lysate, it's a cell lysate. You can detect cytochrome P450 reductase in your cell lysate. And when you add an inhibitor to the reductase, you see the activity of the reductase is reduced. So the kit is backed up by some sample data. On the right-hand panel, we have a lipooxygenase assay kit showing the activity of um, so this is the specific activity of lipooxygenase in uh, cancer's uh, cell line, MCF7. It's a breast cancer cell line, cell lysate. You see the activity. And this is just in positive control to show the activity. So yeah, so cytochrome uh, P450, it actually catalyzes the transfer of electrons from NADPH to members of cytochrome P450. Yeah, in the endoplasmic reticulum. So this kit, uh, the detection unit uh, for cytochrome P450, the limit is very low, 0.2 milliunits per reaction. So it's a 96 well plate format. All these kits are 96 well plate, so which means you can do 100 assays. You need very minimum samples um, to perform the assay. And it's fast. It takes within like uh, one hour. Now, another way, as I mentioned before, that another way to inhibit the uh, reactive oxygen species formation is by inhibiting the antioxidants, as shown here. And antioxidants can be the enzymes, which could be superoxide, dismutase, catalase, or glutathione peroxidase, that helps the generation, that prevents the generation of ROS. Because reactive oxygen species, when it goes, uh, the levels goes high, then it's not good for the cells. Um, so what is an antioxidant? You must have always hear from doctors saying, uh, man, even, you know, um, that you should eat food that are rich in antioxidants. It could be vitamins like ascorbic acid, vitamin C. So um, antioxidant, what it does is that, uh, especially as we age, antioxidants is important. So they inhibit the oxidation of other molecules. 
what is oxidation? It's a chemical reaction where they generate these free radicals, which is detrimental to the cells, mainly the, the proteins, the cell components, which is cell uh, proteins, lipids, DNA. And there are two classifications of these antioxidants. One are the synthetic chemicals or the natural products you find in food, like vitamins you find in food or in meat, mammals. I mean, sorry, I didn't mean meat, but more like food. It can be um, like the orange. It is rich in uh, vitamin C. So the different assay kits we have, if you want to study the small molecules, these are like ascorbic acid, as I mentioned, or uric acid. This is the kit number we have. The platform is, in some cases, K661. In some cases, we have both. You can use the same kit for both color, colorimetric or fluorometric acid. And in some cases, you can um, do just the colorimetric. The sample type for uric acid, you can have a urine or serum sample. And I've shown the data on the right panel that you can measure the uric acid in urine or in human serum. Ascorbic acid, you can measure it, uh, there are two different kits. One is just a colorimetric or one kit you use one, you buy one kit and you can use for two different um, purpose, both either you can do a colorimetric assay or a fluorometric assay. And the different enzymes that are uh, involved, that are antioxidants, as I mentioned before, the superoxide dismutase catalase, peroxidase is myeloperoxidase, these are the different kits we have available. Like 745 myeloperoxidase, 744, these are some of our good sellers. 335 is a good seller, superoxide dismutase. So again, it explains the different catalog number, bivision catalog number, the platform, which means it's a colorimetric or a fluorometric. These are all plate-based assay. So C stands for colorimetric, F stands for fluorometric assay, all are 96 well plate and the sample type. On the right panel, I have shown an example of like superoxide dismutase, K335, we have shown using a jerkut cell mitochondria, mitochondria from yeast and human serum sample. Um, K745 is a myeloperoxidase assay. We have shown the activity in a lysate, in a white blood cell lysate. So yeah, all of our, most of our kids actually, they are backed up with us some sample data. Okay, so another, um, as I mentioned before, that glutathione is another uh, way antioxidant. So we do offer multiple kits for studying just glutathione, total glutathione, the reduced form or the oxidized form. So, this is the structure of the glutathione. Um, um, so let me show you like, uh, if you want to study either glutathione, total glutathione, you can use this kit. Yeah, so you can uh, study both the reduced form, GSH, or the oxidized form, or total. So the K264, as I have shown, uh, no, I have not shown the data here. So yeah, K264, you can measure, same kit, you can measure for uh, reduced form, oxidized form, as well as total. So you have a reducing agent supplied in the kit. So where if you want to study GSH, GSH you convert all the total to the reduced form. And if you want to study only the oxidized form, there is a um, GSH reduced form quencher is provided in the kit. So basically the same kit can be used for if you want to study one form, two form or both. Um, sample type you can use for tissue, cell lysate and human serum. And it's a fluorometric kit. We have separate kits again to study the reduced glutathione form. So we have shown an example of a GSH only, where you can see the data has been shown with a mouse liver. So these are enzymatic kits. So it's not really species dependent, 
but again if you are study showing you want to study a sample that data is not shown in the data sheet you can always you know theoretically the kit should work but the end user might need to do some standardization on their end um, to make sure the they might have to try several dilutions of the sample um, in order to make sure for their sample type because some cell might have less uh, glutathione some might have more so they have to just do some standardization but otherwise the kit should work as we have shown here that it's a jerkard cell line or a human plasma or it's a hep g2 cell a kidney cell line or mouse liver you can use the kit for measuring um, gsha there are different forms colorimetric fluorometric some kits are um, we have one kit k504 it's cell based it's a fluorometric but cell based which means you want to study gsh in the cells not um, in the extract but in the cells you can use that so the different enzymes as i mentioned before the different enzyme involved in this activity yeah the different enzymes in, involved um, as antioxidant we do have kits for those like glutathione peroxidase reductase transferase so reductase and peroxidase they are some of our good sellers so seven um, so these are both are colorimetric assay and the end user can use either a cell lysate or a tissue lysate uh, for measuring the activity of these enzymes this antioxidant um, capacity containing enzymes um in addition so in addition to that glutathione we have different kits of the glyoxylase pathway so what is glyoxylase so glyoxylase is a cytosolic enzyme uh, glyoxylase one um cyclase enzyme it participates in the glyoxylase pathway and this is all involved in detoxification of alpha like ketoaldehydes such as methyl glyoxal to d-lactic acid so basically it's a detox it involved in the detoxification pathway so our uh, what uh, i will give an example like um, glyoxylase one this kit it's a plate based kit both are plate based kit so if you want to study the activity of glyoxylase 1 or glyoxylase 2 so the way the kit works is that if the uh, if their sample has glyoxylase 1 we provide the um like a um, substrate is provided as a part of the kit so this glyoxylase will catalyze glyoxylase will catalyze with the formation of so the substrates are provided in the kit so once the substrate is provided as a part of the kit glyoxylase works on the acts on those on that substrate to generate um a intermediate and this intermediate is what we uh, measure at absorbance uh, i think it's 240 nanometer um that's a colorimetric colorimetric assay kit so yeah basically this kit is very simple this both, both these enzymes they have antioxidant activity additionally um d lactate we do have different kits um like different metabolites or different or methyl glyoxylase um which are the end products of the detoxification process d lactate or methyl glyoxylase if you want to study the generation of this um antioxidant like a byproduct the products following detoxification uh in the glyoxylase system then we do have kit for that d lactate or so d lactate is different from l lactate we do have many kits for l lactate but this is d lactate which is a part of the uh, generated uh, in the glyoxylase pathway glyoxylase system so the different catalog number available um as i mentioned here so for glutathione i showed in the previous slide different kits are available um here we have same it's all plate based assays 
you can use either colorimetric or fluorometric assay. Same thing for methyl glyoxal, gly glyxiol. Glyoxal, so you can have a chlorometric or fluorometric. You can use for food samples or tissue or cell lysate or cerebrospinal fluid. So here's an example for 460, the glyoxal S2. As shown here that um, this kit can be used in you know, either whole human blood or human red blood cells or cell extract or a liver tissue extract. Okay, now coming to the another subcategory is we do have kits to measure the total antioxidant capacity. So what is total antioxidant capacity? It's an analyte that you measure to assess the antioxidant status of a biological sample or to evaluate the antioxidant response. So uh, against the free radicals, like in a given disease, how you want to generate the antioxidant capacity of your sample type. So for that, you look for the analyte and we do have kits to detect that analyte. So here's just a diagram showing the antioxidant superfruits that you must have heard about all the time, like blackberry, raspberry, they're all good for you, or mango, or papaya, watermelon. So the different antioxidant capacity assay kits we have is um, in short form, it's like TAC, total antioxidant capacity, TSC. So the way this kit work is that um, you can measure the both small, it total. So you can measure both small molecule antioxidants and proteins, or if you want to just study the small molecules, then you just mask the protein. So you can, so basically what I mean is like with this TSC kit, you can study both the small molecule antioxidants and protein antioxidants. But if you just want to study small molecule, we have provided an additional kit component. It's called the protein mask. You have to just um, use the protein mask kit component if you want to just study the small molecules and not the proteins. Um, this is a colorimetric assay. And the way this kit works is like, um, uh, cuprus is, uh, so cupric is converted to cuprus by small molecule and protein. And the reduced form is then, is actually chelated with a probe that is a part of the kit component and you detect the color. Um, so the, as shown here, I don't think we have shown here the data. So the sample type that you can use for this kit, um, we can use the serum sample, urine sample, or cell media, or you can even use the food samples. Uh, like you have to just uh, crush the food, um, make an extract from the food samples. So similarly, we have another kit, FRAP, K515. It's a colorimetric assay. And here again, the principle is uh, ferric converted to ferrous. And this um, ferrous that is generated, it then reacts with a probe to give the color, which is measured at a, in the colorimetric range. You can use again food, beverages, serum. We do have kit. We do have kits for studying the phenolic compounds. And the idea is basically we are studying the diazonium salts. You can, if you want to study the phenolic compounds, the antioxidants um, in your food and beverages, you can use this kit. Below is a diagram showing that um, FRAP, FRAP kit, K515, you can study for grape juice, strawberry samples, green tea. And five to seven, you can study again, green tea, orange juice, food or beverages. Okay, next, another subcategory under the oxidative stress is protein carbonyl content. So as I mentioned that when the reactive oxygen species, they damage the cell components, which is basically protein, um, DNA, or lipids. So here, 
protein, I'm showing you the protein oxidation. So how does this reactive oxygen, this diagram shows the how does reactive oxygen species, they either they can directly oxidize um, the proteins by oxidation of the amino acids, which are a part, which are constituents of the protein, or it can cleave the oxidative cleavage of the protein backbone. Um, that's a protein carbonyl. So as I have shown here, um, so protein carbonylation usually happens when chronically elevated blood sugar levels, the create a micro environment for sugars to covalently react with the amino acids forming non-enzymatic adapts. So when cells are under oxidative stress, that can lead to the formation of these protein carbonyls. So this is what is going on in the cells to their proteins. So because of this protein oxidation, amino acids have suffered the modification. It's an irreversible form of protein modification. So here is an example. What happens when cells are under oxidative stress? What happens to the amino acid? Proline. This is what happens, the glutamic semi-aldehyde and other ring open. So this is the oxidation product form for this amino acid or arginine. It also forms a glutamic semi-aldehyde and other side chain. Threonine, carbonyls are formed at the side chain. Methionine gets converted to the oxidation product is methy methionyl. So yeah, as you can see that aspartate converts to glycolic acid. So this is detrimental to the cells. So you do, so we offer kits to study the protein carbonyl content. We have two kits. One is a colorimetric and one is a fluorometric assay. Samples, you can use protein or tissue lysate. And in case of K563, you can use serum or plasma samples. So the way this uh, kit works, I'll give you example of 563. The way this kit works is, um, we, we use this fluorescent substrate. It's a probe. So the, when the cells, the oxidized residues are formed, like cysteine, lysine, arginine, histidine, with um, this fluorescent probe, they react with these oxidized residues. And that is what we are measuring. So the fluorescent probe is a part of the kit. So when cell undergoes this oxidation, now this probe is going to react with these oxidized residues present in your samples. That's how the kit works. So on the left side, we have shown that how oxidized BSA versus this is the oxidized BSA. 563, another kit component. It's a normal serum. If you compare normal serum versus Alzheimer patients, you see the protein carbonyl content is high. And um, uh, like for 563, I know the, the detection range is very low. It's like one mg per ml, which is basically one microgram per microliter. And, um, and basically the carbonyl content can be measured as a putative marker for research in diseases such as diabetes, or multiple sclerosis or Alzheimer's disease. And you can see the example, that Alzheimer's serum, they have a higher level of um, carbonylation compared to normal serum. So another thing I did mention that um, amino acid gets oxidized. Like as I have shown here in the, this slide, amino acids, the direct oxidation of amino acids. So we do offer multiple kits to study all the different amino acids. Actually, we do offer kits to measure all the 20 amino acids as well as some modified amino acids. So this table shows the different amino acids that we offer. Um, like uh, we do have kits for measuring alanine, aspartate, or branched amino acids, citrulline, cysteine, homocysteine, glutamate, glutamine, 
Um, so you can go through this and you see recently we launched Lysine Kit K2005, uh, Citrulline. This is, these are our most newest kit, K2002, K2005. And we do have kits for methionine, phenylalanine. So you will see entire array of all the um, kits for studying your amino acids. Um, we have total D amino acids or measuring total amino acids or the polyamine kits. These are the different catalog number kind of will give you an idea of the different kits available. These are the different detection. It can be either fullerometric or colorometric or um, some kit can do both. So same kit can be used for both colorimetric and fluorometric purpose. Here I have shown the detection range and the different sample type. In most cases, the kit works with cell, tissue, cell lysate or tissue lysate as well as serum samples. So yeah, so with BioVision, you are able to get all the kits if the end user wants to study different um, amino acids. So as I mentioned that in addition to oxidation of amino acids, the lipids and the nucleic acids gets oxidized. So we have the lipid oxidation kits. So these two are our very good cellar kits the, for studying lipid peroxidation. So quantification of lipid peroxidation is a essential step. It will help you to assess the oxidative stress in pathophysiological processes. So what happens is that lipid peroxidation forms MDA and another um, product which is uh, called 4-hydroxynoninal. It's um, as natural byproducts. So what our kit measures is the end product of lipid peroxidation, which is MDA, which is a useful measure, measure of oxidative damage. So what our kit um, lipid peroxidation um, or our MDA kit does, 739, it's, we are basically looking for MDA in your samples. And the MDA, it reacts with some other kit components provided in the kit to generate a MDA and that other component adduct. And you are measuring the adduct by color, by fluorometric acid. Or this, this kit, oh, sorry. This kit can be done both colorimetric and fluorometric. So this is actually, my, yeah, it should be, sorry, it should be both colorimetric and fluorimetric. This kit can work both way. So basically you are measuring the MDA and um, the another kit component that you add, you're me measuring that adduct formed in your samples. And you are measuring either colorimetric or fluorimetric. And the different samples, you can use cell it, you can use human plasma. Additionally, we have this, this is another new kit we recently launched, which is a colorimetric version of the previous one. Um, it's a colorimetric version. So, um, as I mentioned before, the reactive oxygen species they attack polyunsaturated fatty acids of the membrane. There are three mechanisms. One is either by generation of free radicals or free radical independent non-enzymatic oxidation or enzymatic oxidation. So MDA is considered as an indicator of lipid peroxidation. And that is what you are measuring in both the kits. Here below is the data showing liver lysate as well as plasma samples. Um, in addition to proteins and lipids, oxidative species, the reactive oxygen species can cause DNA damage. Uh, we do have kit to measure the DNA damage. So what reactive oxygen species does is oxidizes deoxyribonucleic acids, DNA. And guanine is the one most affected. So these ROS can be either via UV and it leads to carcinogenesis, infection, inflammation, and in aging. 
So these are the different um, modified um, nucleosides. So K253, it's a chlorometric assay and you have need a purified sample. So if you wanna study the DNA damage in, your D in the DNA, then you just need to purify the genomic DNA from the cells or tissues. And then you can study the DNA da um, um, damage quantification. We do have other DNA fragmentation kits, uh, which are basically staining based. So you can use those kit for studying the cell, uh, the DNA damage using either cell sections, or sorry, either in cells or tissue um, sections. So as I mentioned before, that there are a lot of mitochondrial enzymes. A mitochondria is involved in antioxidants. So this, we are coming back to the same diagram, like the prooxidants. So the mitochondrial enzymes, they are actually helping uh, in the preventing the generation of reactive oxygen species. So how it does is the mitochondria produces electron carrier, they're susceptible to this, um, lipid peroxidation, protein oxidation. Um, sorry, the mitochondrial enzymes generate reaction or reactive oxygen species. They are pro, not anti. So pro means they generate the reactive oxygen species. So we do have many kits that study the mitochondrial enzymes. Um, and because of this oxidative stress, this leads to apoptosis. And I will eventually come to them. We do have many kits that uh, can be used to study apoptosis. So this is, this is a diagram to show how oxidative stress affects uh, mitochondria, like mitochondrial activation, following oxidative stress, leads to release of cytochrome C, cytochrome leads to caspase, and the overall caspase cascade gets activated leading to programmed cell death, which is apoptosis. So the um, different kits study available from BioVision for studying mitochondrial electron transport chain or the enzymes in, involved in that electron transport chain are, um, as mentioned below, is NADH reductase or succinate reductase, cytochrome C reductase, oxidase, so the different catalog numbers for the kit and the sample type that you can use, either isolated mitochondria or cell or tissue lysate, or um, as, um, yeah, mostly either cell or tissue lysate or isolated mitochondria. You can study different complex separately, either complex one or two or three or four. Below is the diagram showing the complex one activity um, in uh, cow heart, in, yeah, and in jerkut cells, in a cell line and in a um, tissue, cow tissue. Um, yeah, this kit 968, yeah, with or, no, it should be one actually. Yeah, you can study with antimycin or with antimycin or without antimycin as a, as a active, as a like a control. Um, so as I mentioned that because of reactive oxygen species leads to the activation of caspase leading to cell death. So we do offer many, many kits for studying caspases. Here are a few. Um, if you want to, um, so activation of caspase leads to apoptosis. Now what we offer is either our kits are very versatile for studying caspases. Some are microplate based, some are flow cytometry, and some are fluorescence microscopy. Uh, we do offer 25 assays or 100 assays. Um, and the cell death can actually occur via necrosis, or it could be linked to the elimination of ROS or pore opening. So the different kits, the, the way these kits work is we provide this peptide. Caspase 3, Caspase 8, or Caspase 9, or Caspase 12 specific peptide. So if your sample, uh, like if you induce apoptosis in your sample, there should be Caspase activation. So if there is active Caspase in your sample, they should be able to cleave this specific substrate. And then there will be increase in fluorescence. 
So these are kind of giving an idea of different kits. We have either in green or in red channel. So you can, if active caspase is in your sample, it is going to cleave the substrate, leading to increase in fluorescence, which if it's green, you use K183. If you want to see the red color, you use K193. So these are different specific substrates, specific for uh, caspase, either 3, 8, 9, 12, or if you want to study total caspase activation in your sample, then these are the different kits available. Um, in addition to the uh, what I have mentioned before so far, we have nitric oxide kits. How it is involved in oxidative stress is a nitric oxide NO is a marker of oxidative stress. So what reactive oxygen species does is if it affects the nitric oxide availability, production and post-production. And oxidative stress can lead to the development of hypertension and reactive oxygen species can inactive nitric oxide. So the different kits available are, you can either study nitric oxide or the enzyme nitric oxide synthase. If you want to study the different enzyme um, nitric oxide synthase, we have these different kits available. These are all, uh, these uh, top three are all plate-based. K27207 is cell-based. So if you want to study nitric oxide synthase in your cells, live cells. Um, we, K2008 is the inhibitor screening kit. In, if you want to screen for compounds, inhibiting nitric oxide synthase, you want to use K2008. It's a fluorometric assay. Otherwise, if you want to study the enzyme in your cell or tissue lysate or with a purified protein, you want to see the activity of the enzyme, um, you can use K205 or 26. In addition to that, we have just the nitric oxide on its own that um, if you want to study nitric oxide, we have different kits, K260, 250, 979. So 971 is a cell-based if you want to study nitric oxide in your cells. But if you want to study in your cell lysate or tissue lysate or serum or urine samples, you, we have both colorimetric formats as well as um, fluorometric formats. The right-hand panel shows the NOS assay kit 979. It, was cell, it is cell-based, uh, but um, as you can see that there is an increase activated. You see increased NO production. Um, in presence of oxidative stress. So in addition to everything I have mentioned, so we do have many kits that is a part of the Krebs cycle, TCA cycle, which is again a part of the mitochondria. Um, like, um, um, so you can go through this list. It will kind of give you an idea of the different kits of the TCA cycle. I tried to summarize the targets, the different enzymes or the other coenzymes like NAD or FAD, the different catalog number. How do you detect? Is a, either it's a, mostly it's a colorimetric, but we do have some fluorometric kits as well. This is the detection limit. Some are you can study in cell lysate or cells or tissues. That the right hand side is a panel. So these are all mitochondria other kits that is in mitochondria. Um, all I said. So this diagram shows you this catalog numbers, K6093. These are different catalog number, which is specific for studying these different components of the pathway. This kind of gives you a very summarized version of um, the kits that you want to use. Yeah. Um, if you want to study different components of the TCA cycle, prep cycle, you know from this diagram which kit to buy, which kit to refer to your customer. Additionally, we do have, as I mentioned before, that lipid, is, lipid peroxidation kits are there, but we do have other kits to study fatty acids um, or triglycerides, because triglycerides are associated with metabolic abnormality, atherosclerosis, 
high cholesterol, coronary heart diseases, or if you want to study fatty acids, so 612 is one of our good seller. 622 is another good seller. Um, additionally, we do have, uh, in addition to other DNA damage quantification kits, we have other DNA related kits because the DNA damage quantification you quantify using the purified genomic DNA. So we do offer a lot of DNA isolation kits for purifying the genomic DNA uh, from cells or mitochondria or bacteria or whole blood. We have cell proliferation kits. Um, the, uh, the apoptosis kits that we are talking about, the staining based, we have this BRDU. Yeah. So yeah, so just to conclude, I would say like this is the basic categories that I talked about under oxidative stress. We have reactive oxygen species. I talked about prooxidants, which generates oxy, reactive oxygen species. Antioxidant that prevents the generation of oxygen. Um, oxygen, reactive oxygen species, uh, or we have kids for studying glutathione or the enzymes um, of the glyoxylase pathway or the total antioxidant capacity of your sample. Um, we do have kids to study the protein carbonyl uh, content of your sample, which is a byproduct of the oxidative stress. Uh, we have kids to study the oxidation of amino acids, lipids, DNA damage uh, caused by the oxygen species. We do have kids to study the mitochondrial enzymes that can generate reactive oxygen species, um, leading to apoptosis of the cells. And you can study the apoptosis by caspase kits or nitric oxide, which is an indicator of ROS generation. So you can study the nitric oxide as a small molecule or the nitric oxide synthase or the enzymes associated with it. Oh, sorry. And to summarize again, the key features of our kits, simple and rapid protocol. They are all non-radioactive. So easy to transfer, less hassle. High throughput adaptable. Most of them are like a, in a well format. You need minimum sample. And you can do like at least if you consider the standard, you should be able to do at least like 80, 80 samples in one round, in one plate, having one common standard. Our kits are stable, guaranteed for one year from the date of shipping. Um, we, and there is always a minimum lot to lot variation between our kits for all the kits. Um, our kits are versatile. Most are microplate based, but we do have options for many kits uh, for fluorescence microscopy staining or, or fax analysis, fluorocytometry. Uh, most of our kits are, uh, uh, especially the microplate based, they are 100 assays, but we do have some kits more than 100 assays or small as 25 or 50 assays. So this brings to me the end of my presentation. So thank you all for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, you can post your questions and I'm happy to take any question. You can um, type any question you want. Uh, and so my team, um, we have our general manager whom I report to, Dr. Bhatt. And um, then I have my team. Uh, I am responsible for the exosomes, products and all the in-house assay kits. Um, so this is my email address. And under me, we have um, like uh, Nikhil, he is the new product manager for antibodies. We have Maithili, the product manager for molecular biology and the biochemicals. And we have the tech support um, scientist Ranjita. So Ranjita, Maithili and Nikhil and myself, we are a team and Nikhil, Maithili and Ranjita, they report to me. So we work as a team. So we have Dr. Pahujani, she is the um, antibody, uh, she's the sorry product manager for proteins analyzer kits. So, if you have any question later after today, you are welcome to send email to anyone, they will forward the email to me, or you can send your email to tech at biovision.com as well. So, thank you for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions. So, you can write your questions, and I will, I'm looking forward to any questions you have. You can write in your, um, in the chat, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure to present all of our oxidative assay kits. So I hopefully I'm able to explain, uh, kind of summarize the different kits we have. I mean, we have about overall uh, more than 130 kits under oxidative stress only. It's hard to present all at the same time, but I try to categorize it as much as possible and to give you an idea. So hopefully this will help you. Um, yeah, so thank you. So I'll wait for a few more minutes and I'm happy to take any questions. So maybe I'll wait another minute or two because I'm unable. Um... So I don't want to miss any question if you have, but again, you are always welcome to send question. We'll send you the recorded um, or the, I think we already send you the, um, presentation slides. If not, we are happy to send you again. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Complex one, two. Um, so, the way this works, these are mitochondrial kits. So these kits, if you want to study, so mitochondria has different complexes, right? Complex one, two. So these kits are, if you want to study activity of complex one or activity of complex two, that's also, is it specific for, um, specific for that complex? Let me go, let me give you an example maybe that will help you. Okay, like for example, 968. So it measures different enzymes basically. So the way it works like complex one, it's also called um, NADH <coughs> ubiquinone oxidoreductase. So is the largest complex of the electron transport chain. So the kit, the way the kit works is that it's a, so as I said, it's a, it's also called NADH ubiquinone. So what we do is that an analog of ubiquinone, which is electron transport gets converted through a catalytic reaction and the complex because of the activity of complex one. Basically, you are measuring the activity of complex one. And when that complex one is active, that's going to uh, generate a product, a dye, and you are going to detect the dye. Versus complex two, which has a different, a different enzyme. So that's the major difference. So complex one or complex two, they all are basically you are measuring different enzyme activity of the mitochondria. That's what it means. Like complex two, uh, let me give you an example, is like K520. So, um, sorry, let's say complex three. The enzyme is called ibuquinol cytochrome C reductase instead of NADH reductase. And it's the third complex of the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. 
So what you are measuring in this kit is you are reducing. So it, the kit is based on like, for example, uh, complex three. The kit is based on the reduction of cytochrome C through the activity of complex three. And it should not, and it will not work with complex one. It will work only with complex three. And the reduced cytochrome C is following by active. Uh, so complex three works on the, um, in your sample type and it generates reduced cytochrome C. And that is what you are measuring at 550. Does that explain you? It's basically you are measuring the different enzyme. That, that's what it means. Mitochondrial complex one, two or three means you are studying different enzymes of the mitochondria. And these enzymes are a part of the electron transport chain. Yeah. Yeah, if you want more details regarding the specific differences, I am, you know, shoot me an email and I'm happy to um, give you more detailed explanation. But in, in, in short, you are just measuring different enzymes which of the mitochondria, which are a part of the electron transport chain of the mitochondria. And since mitochondria uh, can lead to generation of so many reactive oxygen species, it's worth to study the different enzyme which is in the mitochondria involved in oxidative stress. Thank you. So anybody has any other question, please? Yeah, even if you don't have any question now, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer um, any question. And even if you send email to anybody else, they will forward the email to me. So I will be happy to answer any question you have. I believe you don't have any other questions. So maybe I will hang up now. And thank you so much, everyone, for your time. And uh, we will maybe resend you the um powerpoint in case you have not received it earlier so thank you and have a great day everyone it's night for us it's 9 37 p.m um u.s time so you all have a great day thank you bye